Welcome to Conversations with Esther. It's me, Stephanie Ayeta, to help you navigate through this space. Uh, where we talk about work environment, career, and the job opportunities that are there. Today, we'll be talking about some of the career, the common career mistakes that people make. And to help us with this conversation is Esther Katiba, who has uh, welcomed us into this space. Thank you uh, for having us, Esther. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, so yes. why, why do we need to talk about the career mistakes that people make? How impactful is this? It, it's very important that that any job seeker or anyone in the workspace understands what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. and, and once you is a job, then you need to know what next. Mm -hmm. Because people get comfortable in the workspace and, and they forget a lot of things or they just pull out from networks and the rest will discuss them. Okay. Say, yes. All right, so we want to get right into it. Some of the common mistakes that people make, yes. let's start from choosing the wrong career. Yes, and I, I have this belief that mm -hmm. it, we should start speaking to our children at a very young age about the career. And I've, my generation, maybe not the current that is vocal, um, would definitely keep saying that I was pushed into this career by my parents. I did mm -hmm. this, uh, this, uh, this uh, degree for my parents. I didn't like it, they liked it, and so someone says, I have done yours and give it to the parents and then you move on and do something different. So I think it's allowing children to also be involved mm -hmm. in choosing a career. So okay. I know parents say we have lived long, we've seen so much, we know what pays, we know what doesn't pay, but then I think it's dependent on the individual, on what makes them happy. It's okay for a parent to guide a, a okay. child, but then allow the child as well to have a say on what they would want to do. How soon should that be? When should you involve your child in that conversation? Um, I think as long as they understand mm -hmm. what makes them happy, what makes them comfortable. I have seen people with very young children who are maybe five, six years. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know those, those games that we, and the songs that we would, we would keep singing that when I grow up I want to be this, I want to be a doctor, I want to be... So it actually speaks to you and tells mm -hmm. you that they have a role model somewhere. Maybe okay. they have seen a teacher. Most of the children would definitely say a doctor or a teacher because they interact with the teacher more. Mm -hmm. But it also tells you that they can identify there's something about this teacher and there's an impact about this doctor. Okay. in my life so it is good even when they are young take them to spaces where they can choose a career you've seen uh, some communities will definitely take their children to their businesses mm -hmm. so that the children also understand how business is done so as young as maybe five three four years i'm not an expert in mm -hmm. uh, that space but i would say that as young as three years or so, begin having some conversation. Just talk to them. And when they get into school, because if they can understand school content, then maybe they can understand a bit. Just give it in a version that they understand. Okay. Yes. All right. Amazing. So we want to sample some of the common mistakes that have been highlighted uh, through research yes. and found out. So forgetting to negotiate your sal salary. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this. It, it's a big mistake that people make. Um, because you want to go on in an interview and sometimes you're desperate for a job mm -hmm. and you choose not to touch the salary bit because okay. people say, you know, if I start talking about money now, I'll be disqualified. But I think it's, it's a head-on conversation that you need to have from the start. Mm -hmm. Of course, it shouldn't be maybe the first conversation. If you go into an interview and they don't talk about it, then don't be the first to introduce that maybe they want to introduce that conversation later. However, for me as a professional and a HR professional, I would rather get to that conversation mm -hmm. at the start because I do not also want to engage you too far and maybe we cannot afford you. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are details that maybe you collect either if people are filling a certain form or something, collect for, uh, in, information about their current and their expected salary so that Please, you don't waste my time, okay. and I don't waste your time if we are not, we are not, we are not uh, on the same page. But negotiating the pay, you need to negotiate. Don't shy away from, 
from from giving the prize you know your mm -hmm. worth you know your worth so speak about uh, your expectations mm -hmm. it may not be the final figure but it is good for you to speak about your expectations and maybe the benefits and other things that you would expect because if you're coming from a different job and you have medical you have other mm -hmm. benefits and then you come into a space where the salary may be different it's lower there are no benefits then i think if it is not an emergency for you to leave the other job, then I think you need to think about what you're losing mm -hmm. as opposed to what you're gaining on this other side. Okay, yes. interesting. And what about uh, becoming passive? Because it's one of the common challenges, uh, mm -hmm. common mistakes that have been mentioned. Mm -hmm. Becoming passive once you get a job mm -hmm. and not asking for that promotion and not asking for that salary raise? Well, I think it's an employer that needs to have structures on how people are promoted because that is how now toxicity and, uh, and maybe favoritism comes into the workspace uh -huh. because when there is no structure and, and it's not clear and the employees don't understand how I move to the next level. Mm -hmm. That's a conversation that I, I, I encourage people to also have in the first phase of their interviews that you need to know what is my next step. Okay. Because you need to talk to, to the employer during the interviews because if you have a vision and you know where you're going as an individual career-wise, then they need to pick from you that two, three years then this person envisions themselves in this position. Mm -hmm. So then it means a promotion, obviously. But then there needs to be a very structured way of promotions because most organiz other organizations, I will not say most, some organizations promotion is if you're my favorite or if you're from my tribe or if I like you, I don't like you or not promote you. It doesn't, dip it doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether you're working but you can have those bold conversations but then it is only one person that is able to maybe have a bold conversation but yeah. others may not even be able to come and ask for a promotion or they might ask for it and jeopardize their job so can we just have structures showing how you get promoted and what it is mm -hmm. that takes you to the next level so mm -hmm. that people don't struggle mm -hmm. in, in the same space so for those that uh, maybe negotiated or asked about it in the interview and now they've been in employment for let's say five years and you've been in the, on the same role is it okay you know in an organization that hasn't really laid out that structure mm -hmm. is it okay should you should one go to the boss and ask for it yes it is yes mm -hmm. it is if you know your worth and you know the value that you've added i think when you go to your boss to ask for a promotion or to negotiate renegotiate your salary then I advise that you also go with your facts mm -hmm. because most people just walk in and they're asking and it's very easy for a boss to put you off by saying so what have you achieved so it is good for you to also prepare your facts mm -hmm. and see that I found this organization here yeah. in my leadership the team has grown or the team productivity or the numbers have grown the profitability has grown from this to this mm -hmm. so numbers don't lie they never lie so just move with this and, and I think uh, go with your facts okay. then you'll be able to whether it's taken in or not I think you've driven your point home that I am making an impact here and I'm adding value to the organization all right yes. uh, let's now move on to the point of networking because this is also another mistake that people make yes abandoning your networks and we're yes. you know before you get a job your network is usually your network, network yeah. and it gets you there so why when people abandon their networks why is this the mistake it, it's a very big mistake i think when you get a job it doesn't mean that your networks are not important to you mm -hmm. and it's not just for a job search i think your networks will keep advising you mm -hmm. on on how to either move to the next level you keep consulting your networks on on what 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 the trends market trends are what the industry trends are mm -hmm. um you need to attend events um, around your, 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 your career so that you network with people and know what they are doing different mm -hmm. you know in their different organizations you need to also network with people in your industry if you're in health and safety then you need to join a team uh, at some networks in health and safety if you in manufacturing you need to join because things will come and mm -hmm. uh, laws and, and, and regulations will change so your network will keep you um, on your tools okay. and what to do and mm -hmm. and how to improve. Okay. Or even if you want to move, 
your networks then will be the ones to, to refer you to someone else or maybe to even recommend you to someone else. Okay, so yeah. it's not only important to maintain your networks but even to form new networks yes, while you're is. on the job. Yes, it is. Very, very important. Okay. Very important. It, it benefits you mm -hmm. in the long run. What about the um, internal networks in your organization? Because a common mistake that has also been mentioned is uh, abandoning relationships at your workplace. Yes, because employees need to know that once you join an organization, and, and the common term that most organizations use is family. You see, you, it's, it's, it's a culture that organizations are trying to form that you need to feel that you're part of a family. So people who come into an organization and want to stay aloof, you want to stay on your own, I think it's, it, it, it works against you. It works against you because if you stay with the people and play the games they play and go for events that they go to, team building and different things, then you're able to gel and to bond and you will be able to work as a team. So sitting on your own works against you. Um, and you will not get to know so many things. You will not get the support you need because people will feel like it, Stephanie doesn't like mixing with people. Stephanie doesn't want to talk to people. So then how do you work? It's a relationship. It's a social mm -hmm. space. So then how do you work and how do you excel on your own? So how, how exactly does it affect one's career? Because someone might say, I, you know, I'm a loner, I'm an introvert, I don't like associating with people. But then why do we have HR, we have finance, we have manufacturing, we have different organizations, different departments. Mm -hmm. It's because they are interlinked with each other. Okay. So for me in HR, I think I, if I pull myself out of manufacturing, I pull myself out of health and safety, my role touches the people and this is the same people that could, God forbid, be injured or people that just need my attention and I need to make sure they have the right PPE, I need to make mm -hmm. sure they are safe, I need to talk to them and know how they feel and their, empl their employee experience. Mm -hmm. So then how would you work on your own? Finance is not approving their own expenses. They are proving your expenses yeah. you in, a, in a different uh, department. If you in sales, you will need finance to, 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 to approve or to even pay for things. You will need HR to hire people or to train people for you. So mm. there's no way you're going to work on your own. It, it's just, it's, it's a good... Uh, Cross teamwork. Yes, yes. It's, okay. it's just a space that you put yourself in and it's a dangerous one because you'll fail. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Okay, talk to us about missing deadlines as a common mistake. Clearly, it's, it's, it's on performance. It's on performance for every employee that you will make a mistake if you keep missing your deadline. If you're given a deadline to hit some targets and something, it jeopardizes your job either way because you have, you have KPIs, you have that your employer is expecting that you deliver. As much as they are paying you, they're expecting that you deliver back what has been laid there. So your, your, your key performance indicators, you, you will need to keep meeting your timelines. See, if, if you're not reliable, and it's unfortunate that some employers would, would, would also feel that we gave this person a job, they are not reliable, you know, if we give them something, um, you have to follow up so yeah. that it is done. I, I think uh, that's not, that's not a, a well-performing employee. If you're able to meet your deadlines and keep your promises and keep your word that if you say you deliver, you deliver this. So every employer is looking for a reliable person and a person that will meet their deadlines and give the results that so are what required. Is, what is the most likely result when you keep on missing deadlines? How does it dent your career? It definitely you move in, you be, you're moving into an unperforming person. So mm -hmm. eventually they will let you go. I don't think there's any organization that wants to keep you if you're not mm -hmm. a performer. So the fate is certain. Yes. yes. It's you're it, it, you're it, bound it's, to it's, leave. Yeah, because when you go for your mm -hmm. resources, you go for your meetings, mm -hmm. then it's possible, even for you, you may not be able to defend yourself because they will say, we gave you this, you were supposed to deliver this at this time, it was not done. So then the debate is, Okay. It's, it's, it's very simple. Okay. A very right. simple one, yeah. What about now development of skills? Because people now get so comfortable when you get into a workplace, especially in Kenya. People uh, say this to people who work in government uh, yeah. entities, organizations, because you're comfortable, your job is secure, so you don't look to develop your skills. You just remain the same. Ten years later, you're still the same person. It's, it's a dangerous space to be in because things do happen. Mm -hmm organizations decide to come and cut 
down on people and you need to be marketable you need to be in the space where people will be looking for you need to develop yourself you need to go back to school i don't know why people don't want to study mm -hmm. maybe the schools are also we need to address our education system yeah. maybe people <laughs> feel they are tortured in the schools but self development doesn't just mean that you must have money to go to school or you must have the time to leave work earlier and go mm -hmm. to school you can do that online now I mean, everything is, is, is within reach. There, there are courses that you do online. Um, I remember I was, there there's some courses I was doing every other day in the evening. So when I'm leaving work and you're in a, in a bus, then you have your earphones on and you're listening. And by the time you get home, you have learned something and you graduate. Someone once said, you know, uh, instead of being on um, a queue waiting for a matatu or the vehicle to fill up you can be in the queue for two hours and somebody you left work with went into class for two hours yeah. so at the end of the year you've queued enough and at the end of that same year somebody else will graduate the same time that you are on the queue okay, so, so you just need to to, to, to manage your time. And so that, that brings in the aspect of time management because yes. it's also another uh, mistake that I've seen or that has been mentioned in the, research, in the research that people fail to manage their time. Yes, in, in the workspace. You see sometimes, and I think in this young generation and this time mm -hmm. that we give people the freedom to even work from home, mm -hmm. that's a very risky space because people also can decide to abuse it unfortunately yeah. people need to manage their time know what to do at what time and it's unfortunate that some organizations you work for 90 mm percent -hmm. of your time can even be spent on emails it's very unfortunate i mean it's a back and forth thing but um, you need to plan your time and know how much time I allocate to emails, how much time I allocate to this, and how much time I allocate to myself as well, mm -hmm. to develop myself, and even for a break, and anything that's healthy that you want to do, like go to the gym after work or something, you need to plan and schedule your, 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 your items back okay. at a, yes. So time management is Very key, key very key. If you can't manage mm -hmm. your time, even if you're not working, mm -hmm. even in your own home, you yeah. will lose it. You just lose it, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. speaking still on time management and its relation to setting goals because goals should be timely and people fail to do this and it's a common mistake that has also been mentioned in, um, in the career uh, space. Yeah. So tell, talk to us about that, setting it career is, goals. It's such a good season where everyone is going to set goals again <laughs> for yeah. the next year and I know I don't know how many people have evaluated the 2022 goals mm -hmm. did you meet them it's no offense for you to pick what you did not manage and take it over to the next year you don't mm -hmm. have to feel pressured to set new goals but um, in your career you need to set goals where do you really want to be at age 30 at age 40 at age 50 or whatever what do you want to achieve whether short or long-term goals mm -hmm. you need to know what you want to to do and where you want to go then that drives and that determines then what courses you take and when you take them right. what breaks you take I've seen people take career breaks mm -hmm. and, and go into studying mm -hmm. okay. because it's a very competitive world very competitive so if you need to take some career breaks in between and study it's a big risk I know it affects your yeah. it affect your financials but if you need to take that career break then you might need to take it at that time mm, right. yes but set your goals and know what you really want to be in the next few years mm -hmm. it should be very clear to you the rest of the people may not even be interested but for you you need to know did i even achieve it did i so that at the end of every year then you know did i do what i wanted to do did i do the course that i wanted to because work can take all your time it can take up everything mm -hmm. and you will not even even improve yourself and you stick now on the same job and sometimes employers will use that against you and say but you came here with a diploma the next position requires a degree so unfortunately you have to stay where you are okay. so it is for you to to know what you want to be and where mm -hmm. you want to go so it yeah. keeps you accountable and allows you to move to the next level yes. okay yeah. Okay, let's talk about those that prioritize money, this being a common mistake that people make in their career. People would cross that ask when 
you say that you don't prioritize mm, money like when you're looking for a job, I know. You actually said that earlier, saying that uh, when you're looking for a job, you need to look at the vision that the organization has yes. and not prioritize money. Not, not prioritize money much, because you can be paid so much, but the place will be toxic. You can be paid so much, but you're not growing. Mm -hmm. Or you the roles that you're being given are really not aligned to your vision and everything. Mm -hmm. I think uh, people need to get their eyes sometimes off. That's why I'm saying when you set your goals, mm -hmm. then what leads you and when you're looking for a job, it's really not just about the money. The money is important yeah. and money is a motivator, mm -hmm. definitely. But I think if you just look at the money, then you might land yourself in the wrong job. You might land yourself in the wrong career choice or mm -hmm. anything. I think First, put everything else in place. Choose what you want to do, your short-term, your long-term goals, and then run for it now. Okay. Then decide, because once you grow yourself, you develop your skills. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, your, your papers and your qualifications will determine how much you paid. Okay, yeah. amazing. So that also relates to another mistake, you know, taking a job that you're not passionate about. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hate waking up to something that I don't love doing, personally, I hate you it. You have the drive? I have it. Yes, because I don't want to wake up to a job, and I know many people are trapped in this because you have to pay your bills, you mm -hmm. have to do so many things. So you wake up to something that you don't like, and you, you, you are complaining day in, day out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't give you satisfaction, it doesn't give you the peace and the joy that you want. It's unfortunate because you have to pay your bills so you take the job that comes but can you even in that job as you do that job to pay your bills then try and align yourself to your passion something that motivates you something mm -hmm. that has an impact and mm -hmm. something that you can do they say your passion is that one thing that you can do for free mm -hmm. so that which you can even do for free i can personally do mentorship for free so I, I, I don't, right yes, I, I, that, that way I know. If I'm dealing with people and I'm, I'm doing HR and, and impacting people, that I can do for free. Mm -hmm. So that which you can do for free and is close to your heart. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So what happens now to those that have chosen careers in different industries from that which that they are passionate about? Because this is also another mistake that is made. So you have gotten into, um, let's say, journalism yet your passion is in engineering and you're you know far too gone to go back i wouldn't say drop it i think um it's never late for you to align with something mm -hmm. um there's room for you to study there's room for mm -hmm. you to if you want to shift shift uh, but you, i can imagine if you've done 10 years into something mm -hmm. then uh, Possibly you've developed a passion or you've seen some benefits in it. So you might also need to change your mind. I think sometimes it's also in the mind that I don't like this and I don't like it and you keep complaining. Mm -hmm. But uh, interesting, you can align yourself and align your, your growth in that same direction and yeah. love what you're doing. Because I think if you tell someone shift and turn back 10 years late, someone feels oh, I'm losing it. But I, I, I don't think there's... Um, this is, this is that opportunity for you to go back and, and, and keep wasting your time. But you can align what you're doing with your sure. passion and just make sure that you enjoy doing it and grow yourself mm -hmm. in the direction that you wanted to. Oh. Yeah. And how important is it now if, if uh, for a person now that is, uh, has just graduated from university to start immediately in the career that they have studied for and not going to another so that they avoid getting too far and then now are regretting i will say look for mentors uh, get the right networks mm -hmm. so that you don't miss it understand what hang around people that have been in the industry that you want to get into mm -hmm. so that you understand what it takes and what what uh, you see people see people shining and they're like i want to be like stephanie i want to be like esther yeah they don't know what it is, but uh, if you want to go into engineering, if you want to go into HR, if you want to go into legal or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then please uh, hang around people that are in that industry or in that career mm -hmm. and listen to them and, and just learn from them so that as you go into it, you know what you're expecting okay. in, in that space. But, but tag, tag along people that have been in the industry, mentorship, 
works perfectly. You've mentioned listening to them and hearing what they have to say. Yes. And now another mistake that uh, that is there is communication. Now the hearing, listening, getting feedback uh, is a problem uh, that has been mentioned. Talk about that. You will not learn if you can't listen and take correction and take feedback. Mm -hmm. I think uh, good or negative feedback uh, is it's important for you. It is whatever people think is, uh, is meant to destroy you, sometimes it's intended to correct you. Maybe it's just the way it's positioned or the mm -hmm. way it's communicated, but feedback either form, the way you receive it, you can turn it around and it will become for you good. If someone comes and criticizes you, mm -hmm. then you can take that positively and improve, or you can choose to take it negatively and be bitter about it, but it's so a way you want to take it. Depends with your outlook. Yes. Okay. What are some other mistakes maybe that we have not mentioned and you would want to highlight before we close the conversation? I, I think we'll definitely in the next conversation talk about how people exit jobs. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to exit jobs with respect. Um, because uh, it's, it's usually a joke and we speak uh, in our HR uh, circles and say, you know, where people exit jobs, they forget that uh, in your next job, you need, a recommendation. You, you need a recommendation or you might find me in the same panel. Uh -huh. And that's when at the door you say, no, investor is here, I'm not getting it, you know? Yeah. You know? And we, we, we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. We talk to each other. I, I once uh, mentioned that a certain gentleman went looking for a job somewhere and I was a HR somewhere. And, and where he went mm -hmm. is uh, the lady that is a very good friend of mine, a HR, and said, oh, Esther, how come your people are looking for jobs in my space? What's happening? Ah. And I said, well, let me check. Maybe it's me who is a problem. <laughs> so you see, there are those back end conversations that are going on mm -hmm. and someone will call and say, I know the HR here, Stephanie. So let me ask Stephanie, why is so and so coming here? Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes the conversation is not very good. Someone say, you, I would be happy to release the guy to you or hire at your own risk or yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it is just important for people to be careful. Okay, what this a conversation. Good. We'll definitely have that in the next episode. Thank you very much, Esther. That is a conversation that you need to be part of. So make sure you follow us on our social media handles. That is at Conversations with Esther on Instagram and YouTube. On her personal LinkedIn account, you can get her at Esther Katiba. Thank you for staying with us, tuning in this amazing conversation on common mistakes uh, that people make in their career. Uh, remember, we tune in next week, same time, same place. We have been shooting here live at Hate and Air Serena Hotel. My name is Stephanie. See you.